Welcome to Lens Smudge. The show that blends commercial photography, professional styling, kick-ass creatives, and fearless business owners so you can reach your maximum potential. We're your hosts, Chelsea and Missy. We have five festive, fabulous guests who are showcasing their own original holiday content. And we're also going to bring you behind the scenes as the artist's imagination comes to life. Along with tips and tricks, you get a look into how to create each idea on your own. Then, lastly, we're going to wrap it all up with a glittery bow and have a photo shoot. Our first guest on the show is Bryn Estes Putney. She's a stylist and art director for several major interior corporations. We asked Bryn to be on the show today because she is a stop motion rock star. Her concepts are always fresh, eye-catching, and on trend. Bryn has such an amazing sense of animation while she is tediously styling each component. Wait till you see what she whips up. Hey Bryn, thanks so much for being on the show today. What do we have going on? Well, first off, thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited to show you guys some really great stop motion photography tips. Uh, today we're working on a unboxing. Um, everybody loves at the holiday time to unwrap gifts. I also love to wrap gifts. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. Let's talk about the gift wrap paper for a second. Can we get in on that? So of course, traditional red, Gotta love that for the holidays. But I thought we would uh, kind of mix it up with some introductions of pink. Um, and we're shooting on this beautiful emerald green seamless. Um, and we've done some stunning floral toppers on here. Um, and we're gonna kind of show you what's inside these beautiful gifts because the stuff that's on the inside is just as beautiful as the stuff that's on the outside. Well, I can't wait to get started. Let's go, let's roll. So we just wrapped up. I love it, by the way. But um, I want to know a little bit more about this particular technique. So this technique is called stop motion photography. Um, it's a way to add life and animation to still photography. So we move things uh, frame by frame. Um, it's shot, and each frame we show a different movement. So we can make things spin, jump, slide, glide. Uh, we can create some movie magic where we would take maybe um, an apple and turn it into a banana um, all through stop motion. Um, so here we've done it with GIFs and there's going to be some really great tearaway footage um, and ribbons kind of flying off and some magic reveals of the product. So what are some of your like go-to tips or tricks that you use for your stop motion? Uh, well definitely need tools so I use a lot of gaff tape, I use wedges, like little wood wedges to kind of, uh, you know, prop things. Sometimes we use fishing line to make things float or fly or <laughs> to, you know, sometimes you just gotta hold something up in the air and then we kind of, you know, in post-production, we kind of squeak out those, uh, those fishing lines. Uh, yeah. um, here, this was a simpler shot. So we just did a lot of just simple moving. I used a little bit of tape to kind of, you know, get the ribbon where I wanted. Um, and then we had fun tearing away this paper and really just my hands were the, the biggest tool that I used here. Um, and it creates just a really fun, entertaining uh, clip. Yeah, and I noticed too, like it's kind of like a slow roll, like you don't just make these big moves. So it's like a little here, a little there, a little here, a little there. So it's like building on this whole like small movement. Yeah, so you can have a lot of fun to create movement. So smaller movements are gonna be um, a little bit smoother uh, of a video. Larger movements are gonna be a little bit more choppy. You also can play with the speed of something by adding more or less frames. Um, so there's a lot of different techniques that can be used um, just the way you move it. Um, you can make something spin and slingshot back just by uh, you know, working with momentum mm -hmm. of how the, the object is flying. Um, you know, you just have to, sometimes I actually have to take like a pencil and see, you know, how does that spin? How does it, you know, it starts fast and then it goes slow and like, how does that work? So sometimes it's just yeah. trial and error. Yeah. Well, I love it. Thanks so much for this. And I uh, can't wait to show you guys. But before we go anywhere, I just want to talk a little bit about the photo side. 
for stop motion. There are a couple of key things that you need to have in order to have a successful stop motion shoot. Number one is a locked off camera. That means it does not move, you don't touch it, nothing happens, it is where it is. So today we're using a FOBA stand. As you can see, the camera is locked off. We are tethered to the capture station, so I'm making all of my shots through capture one, and that way it's hands off. I don't touch the camera, I don't do anything, everything is locked off. Secondly, um, this is a nice closed set. Again, the lighting can't move because it's all about continuity. You don't want a, your lighting to shift at all in this image because it's going to reflect over time. So everything locked off, camera, lights, and then uh, the fun part is putting it into the animation. So there are a couple different programs that you could do that in. I prefer to do mine in Premiere. However, if you're just beginning, you want to output everything as a JPEG, and then you can even use like free gift maker online. So there are lots of resources out there for you to use. Now for our second guest, we have Anna Vicuna, who has over 20 years of floral styling and retail experience. She has worked in both the wedding and event design industry and owned a floral and gift studio before becoming a mom to three beautiful children. Currently, she works as a sales rep in the gift industry, helping small businesses curate their merchandise and style their retail displays. Let's go check out what she's got going on. So guys, we're on set with Anna now, and I'm so excited to have you here today. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So why don't you tell everybody what you're gonna whip up here. I see some really beautiful pieces here. What are you gonna do for us? So I'm gonna create a live garland along the table, um, a holiday tablescape that includes traditional elements like holiday greens that you can um, either obtain at your own local grocery store or even in your own yard, um, elements that are easily attainable and not expensive. We're gonna start with that and then we're gonna add on layers. We are going to use a color palette that's a little bit unassuming for the holidays, bringing in the color of blush, which is We beautiful. love blush, love that's in our blush. color palette. Love blush. Yes. Um, so we're gonna use you know, some beautiful um, elements that are gonna reflect the light um, and give a little bit of um, um, opulence to the display. And um, it's also going to be super easy, and anyone can really do this. So someone like me who has no green thumb whatsoever, absolutely, I can accomplish this. Absolutely. The challenge is up there. All right, guys, so we're going to leave Anna be, and we will come back and check in with her and check the progress. So Anna, I absolutely love what you've done to this table. Um, and I want you to just kind of explain to everybody what your vision was and how did this inspiration come about? Absolutely. Um, so I wanted something that started out very organic, but then again, brought in elements of opulence to really kind of make it feel holiday and festive and um, a little bit, you know, with an edge of formal, but not um, anything that would be stuffy so to speak. So I also wanted something that would run the length of the table so every guest that was either sitting or um, maybe you know enjoying this table got to see very different elements but everything had everybody had something very special um, next to them or in their view as they were um, experiencing the table. And what would you say maybe like your, your main ingredients, three or four things that were the key to me pulling this all together? So for someone like myself. Absolutely. So there's a lot of florals on this table. Um, luckily, you know, I um, have the ability to have access to florals. Again, this, the idea of this was to create something that could be um, span along different budget types. So the elements that we started with very much again were those holiday greens. Holiday greens that you can get at a garden center, a local grocery store, again maybe even get in your own backyard. Um, something that was easy to start with. So that's really our base layer is you know white pine, 
um, holly, inexpensive, you know, holiday greens that are easily accessible. After that, then we started to add the layers. The next most inexpensive thing to, to use in design is candlelight. Um, it adds such an element of um, warmth and um, it's just an inexpensive way to really um, add um, beauty to your display very, very easily. So that would be, the, I think, the second element that you kind of work from after you've, you've figured out your base of your greens. Um, and then within staying within your budget range, you know, that kind of determines how many florals you really have um, on your table. You can do this with a lot of florals. You can do this with a little bit of florals. Um, we also added elements of um, cranberries, and we added elements of um, jingle bells, you know, that are easily purchasable at, you know, various locations that sell um, decor items, and you can kind of just bring those in. So again, kind of adding to your display, but not really beefing up your floral budget there. So I love this, and I just want to know if you're available to come style my <laughs> table, please. Absolutely, I'd love to. I could see that, you know, me trying to attempt this probably is a nightmare, but that's okay. It, it, you know, it's beautiful what you did. Um, what I want to do is actually talk about the lighting a little bit. Uh, so for this particular tablescape, I wanted something a little bit more moodier and not so light and bright. So what I ended up doing is going with the Pro Photo D2 500 watt. I added the beauty dish to cut the diameter down a little bit and to make it a little bit more smaller of a spread in the light. I added the 25 degree grid. I also wanted a little bit of fill um, on this side to also fill in the metal. A good tip is when you're working with metal, you want to also use either white, silver, or black, depending upon what kind of look you're going for, to fill in some of this metal over here so it doesn't look flat. And I ended up using the 100 millimeter lens because I really love the compression. It, um, I shot at a shallow depth of field and the backgrounds really compress nicely and it's just blurred and blend out. So the focus is really in the front of the tablescape. So once you see the final image, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But we love how this came out and we hope you guys do as well. So just let us know. Our next guest is Sarah Plum. She's a photographer and wine content creator. Sarah's worked as an in-house commercial photographer before stepping into the role as photo editor for a major Boston magazine. She's a jet setter who loves to travel all around the world and is an excellent resource for the best dining and vacation spots. Let's go check in and see what she's up to. Oh my God, Sarah, this looks amazing. Thank you. I love what you did and I, I can't wait to eat it actually. Oh my gosh, I can't wait either. But why don't you let our viewers know what your thought process was behind um, putting the board together? Because I know you love to entertain and drink wine, so you're you're really a professional at doing this. Oh gosh, I don't know if I'm a professional, but I definitely enjoy you're it. You're getting there. Oh, maybe someday. Um, but yeah, I love putting these charcuterie boards together. I think if you're going to a holiday party, this is the best possible thing that you could show up with. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm honestly, when it comes to assembling the board, I just throw my cheeses down first. So okay. I, I start with the big cheese, which is usually the brie. And I like to put that right in the corner. And then I put down um, similar shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. And then I move on to my jams, mustards, uh, hot honey, anything that's in a jar really, the petite cornichons, and I start building all those other little pieces around that. Okay. Usually I move on to meat next. I like to slice my uh, cured sausage. I like to roll my prosciutto, and with these little pieces of salami, I actually take it, fold it in half, and then fold it in half again. I love that little detail. Yeah. I'm like, that makes such a difference. Oh, it makes or breaks the board versus it like flattening it. Right, absolutely. So. And it adds some height and dimension as well, which love I really that. like. I think that's important. Um, and then I also add these little decor pieces for the holidays. So sometimes I'll do cranberries, mm -hmm. rosemary, or I'll slice a pomegranate in half. And then I slice it again on an angle on the bottom so mm -hmm. that it tilts upright. I think it's those little details that make it really special. Oh, it does. It absolutely elevates the board and everybody just wants to like 
stick their fingers in yeah, and dig in. Absolutely. So tell me where I'm just starting to get into wine, so I really don't know wine. Okay. But what would you recommend uh, pairing with each of these cheeses? Oh, that's and a, why? That's a great question. Okay, so starting off with the brie, who's kind of like, in my opinion, the best cheese on this board. I love a good brie. A brie is extremely creamy and um, fatty, mm -hmm. right? So you need a wine that cuts through that fat with some acidity, and that's why you want to go with a nice bubbly champagne. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then for the blue, it's a very pungent cheese. Oh, it's right? so strong. Yes. And the rule of thumb with cheese is the smellier the cheese, the sweeter the wine. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yep. So you're, okay. you're going to want to pair the blue or a Stilton or anything like that with a port because okay. it's very sweet. Um, the goat cheese is kind of like the blank slate of cheeses. Yeah, so it's bland. It's kind of bland. Yes. It has a little bit of, you know, tanginess to it. So a great wine to pair with that cheese would be a Sauvignon Blanc because Sauvignon Blancs are very citrus forward. Mm -hmm. So they balance each other out really, really well. Now for the Gouda, Gouda, I know, Gouda is your favorite. For Gouda, it's such a big, bold cheese that you need mm -hmm. a big, bold wine. So you're gonna go with a full-bodied Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. Um, they are both big and bold, but they don't overpower each other. Okay. So that's what I would do. And what do you recommend? So if I wanna buy somebody a bottle of wine on a budget and not offend them, okay. what do you recommend that I would buy them? Okay, so that's a really good question. I actually have a few wines right here. Oh, so this first up is my go-to wine. It is $11. What? It's amazing. It's big, it's full-bodied. It is, you know, everything that you want in a Cabernet. Mm -hmm. Has all those notes of dark red fruit, but also a little bit of hazelnut, which is really nice. Okay, and I can buy this in any liquor oh, store? Yeah, any or? liquor store. Okay. And this pairs really, really well with meat. So if you're going to a holiday party, this is perfect. If there's a prime rib, filet mignon, any type of steak, really, this is a great, great wine. Okay. And it's from Napa Valley. Okay. Um, another wine that's really great is this Grey Lack. And I'm usually not a Sauvignon Blanc drinker because I, I just love red so much. Mm -hmm. But this is such a unique wine because most Sauvignon Blanc is very gooseberry forward, stone fruits, and almost like fresh cut grass. Oh God. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of, I don't know, iffy sometimes, but yes. this one is like peaches and honeydew melon, and I've never had anything like it. Okay. And the cool thing about this is it's super versatile, so you could have it with a salad or you could have it with a really carby dish like pasta. Okay. So I love that wine. And that so goes... there's a wine for all types of scenarios. Yes. And, yes. and this wine goes for $18. Okay. That's, so that's not bad. It's not bad at right. all. Right. Now this third wine is a really special wine. So this is a red blend and all of the grapes come from California and it's a blend of Syrah, Petite Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Zinfandel grapes. Okay. It's medium bodied, so it literally goes with any dish. And it goes for $20 a bottle. And an entrepreneur out in California named Gary V um, developed this brand. Okay. And it ships right to your house. You can't find this in stores. Oh, cool. So it's, All it's, right. it's, it's so really good. So he's trying to come out with a new line. Yeah. And, okay, that's yeah. pretty cool. And if you want, you can customize your box your of wine for, you know, sixty dollars a box. So it's twenty dollars a bottle, and you okay. can do a rose, a white, and a red, or you can do all red. So there's a little bit of customizability to it. Okay. Yeah. So what if I won the lottery and I want to <laughs> spend big bucks on wine for someone? I better be getting a nice. I, <laughs> <laughs> what would you recommend that I go purchase? Okay. So this is my favorite present in the world to get <laughs> or ah. to give. So this is an amazing Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley. It's called Stag's Leap Artemis. 
and the grapes are sourced from five different vineyards in California. Oh, wow. It's an incredible wine. Big, bold, lots of flavor, lots of structure, and from start to finish, it's it's just incredible. So it's a bottle you can drink all on your own and yes. probably five at a time. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. The only thing I would say is if you are going to drink this, make sure that you decant it a few hours before you're going to eat so that all those tannins can smooth out a little bit. Okay. Good tip. Yep. FYI, people. And this goes for about $60 a bottle. Oh, I thought it was going to be so much more. No, it's not too bad. Okay. Yeah. Um, the second wine that I'd like to show you is the Tattinger. This is a beautiful champagne from France, Champagne France. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's not light, it's actually a bold champagne. So at first you get all of those, all the flavors that you would expect mm -hmm. from something like full, you know, full bodied, so to speak. But then on the end notes, you get this beautiful like toast brioche taste and it goes well with any type of seafood or really anything that you're eating at a holiday party. I mean, what doesn't champagne go well with, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, this goes for about $50 a bottle. And okay. I, I actually prefer it over, you know, Veuve Clicquot or Malay Chandon. I think this is much better. That's much better. Yeah, so if you wanna get something a little bit interesting, I would go with this. Okay, great. Yeah. So if I was to bring this board to a party, what is the best wine to pair with it? So the best wine, in my opinion, to pair with a charcuterie board is a very unique wine from the Becca Valley in Lebanon. It's called Chateau Muzar. Do I have to go to Lebanon to get it? No, you don't, okay. but you might pay a little extra for it in stores. Okay. Um, but it's absolutely unique. It kind of tastes like mushrooms. Because of the climate that it's grown in, it has mm -hmm. all these really interesting tertiary flavors. So when you sip it, it starts with a mushroom taste, and then it kind of goes into this musty forest floor. Oh my god, like moss? <laughs> like, all I'm thinking is green moss in my head. I know it sounds a bit funky, but it's really, really good. It's okay. Like, it's like you're walking into your basement cellar. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, though, I promise. Okay. And with a I cheese, with like a pungent cheese like blue or Stilton, which people usually enjoy around the holidays, mm -hmm. all of those pungent flavors in the wine are going to be brought up by the cheese and vice versa. So I definitely recommend picking up a bottle of that. It's It goes for about $65 a bottle. Okay. But just, you know, use a little caution when you're opening up that cork because the most popular vintage that's sold is a 2001. Okay. So with a 19 year old wine, that cork is old and it might break in half. So you have to oh boy. be gentle. Okay. And I would definitely decant it very gently as well because it's going to have a ton of sediment on the bottom. Okay. But you're not going to be disappointed for sure. Okay. So I don't have to win, you know, the mega box in order to be able to afford it then. No. Perfect. No, you're good. So all my friends are winos. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to get them a gift. Oh, what do you recommend for that? Okay. So I have a couple suggestions for you. A great gift is a decanter. Oh, yes, I've recognized that. Yes, it's actually an essential in my opinion. Mm -hmm. If you're somebody that really likes drinking reds, full-bodied reds, and young wines that need time to open up and breathe and get all those tannins nice and smooth, you should get one of these decanters. Okay. I also like this uh, shape and size specifically. Yeah, it's cool. Because it holds an entire bottle of wine and if you have an older wine with a lot of sediment, when you pour it, all of that sediment gets caught right on this base. Oh, okay. So it's very handy. Cool. And another gift is a vacuum seal wine preserver. This one is called a rabbit. And you know, it, it, it's very like, you're like, what the heck is this? But it's awesome. This is a very budget friendly gift and your friends will thank you. So after your friend opens a bottle of wine, maybe it takes them a week to drink it, right? Right. And after a week, because of the oxidation process, your wine starts to taste kind of vinegary. So this is their new best friend. You're going to plug this in the top of the bottle and you're going to put this on top of this and you suck out all the air. 
Oh, cool. And you, your wine stays good for a week, two weeks, and you can't even tell that you opened it that long ago. Okay. So great gift, 20 bucks. Cheap. Now the best gift, maybe for your best, best friend that you want to splurge. Bad man pajama. Yep. So this bad boy is called a Corvin. This is like magic. Okay. Now this is the first model. They have newer models now that are a bit more expensive, but this mm -hmm. is about a hundred bucks. And it is an amazing tool. So basically it is the ultimate wine preserver. So what you do is you take your bottle and you're gonna clamp the neck on. Oh, gotta lift this up first. You're gonna clamp the neck on and then you're gonna push that needle right into the cork. You don't even oh, have to cool. take the foil off. Oh, it's super simple. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's literally incredible. Um, and then you're gonna take your glass. You're gonna hold it like this and you're gonna pour. Oh, wow, I thought you were actually gonna pull the cork out. No, the cork never comes out, and oh, that's the beauty of it. Oh, that's so cool. So that's why when you use this tool, you can actually open a bottle of wine and enjoy yeah. it a full year later, and it tastes oh. fresh. So what it does, every time I press this little tab, it's not allowing air into the cork or into the bottle, it's releasing argon gas. Is this also telling you your limit? Like, Sarah, you can't have I know. another pour. I know, I'm like, come on. Is um, it shutting you off? Yeah, really. So basically what that argon gas does is it pressurizes it. Mm -hmm. But the only thing to keep in mind is there is a little bit of gas sitting right at the top. You can actually kind of feel it, it's funky. Mm -hmm. So you want that wine to breathe still, so you're just gonna give it a little swirl. And so does this, the Corvin, stay on top of the bottle the whole time? No, so at the end, you're gonna lift that needle out comes right out. Now you want to be careful because the needle is really sharp. Okay. But you can just rinse it, put it away, and it will have a little hole in it, but the cork will not, if it's a natural cork, yeah. it's going to seal up. And um, within five minutes, if you shake it out, nothing will come out. Oh, cool. Yeah, but be careful because if you're putting this into a synthetic cork, that won't happen. Okay. And you could end up with some stinky wine. So. Okay. It's a great oh, tool. Well, you have educated me so much today. Oh, good. We're so excited that you were able to be on the show. Oh my gosh, me too. And I say we take this board and go chow down. Let's dive in. Yay. Our next guest is Tommy O'Donnell. In case you forgot, Tommy is a master prop stylist, interior designer, and lover of all DIY things. He has already showed us how to curate the clutter and style with the impossible budget. Today, we get to see his take on an updated look for an old holiday tradition. Let's go see what he's whipping up. Tommy, thanks so much for coming. Thanks for having me back. I'm so happy back for the holidays. I know. Well, when we had this craft segment in mind, there was only one person I could actually ask, and plus, your fan following is growing, so what? we have to boost the fans. I know, my Instagram is blowing up. <laughs> mm, all I can say, <laughs> So uh, holiday present. Awesome, what do we have in store today? Tell me about it. So, you know how like boho wall tapestries and like wall woven like are really popular right oh, now? Oh, huge. Yeah, so I kind of wanted to take that idea and make it into like a holiday decor item that's still really cool, but like it's still like you know, balances the traditional with the modern. Awesome. So what we're going to make today is a boho um, advent calendar that will be used for in the shape of a Christmas tree. So first what we need to grab are some dowels. I pre-cut these down um, and I tapered them in size so they make a triangular effect to mimic a Christmas tree. I have um, macrame cord. I have some yarn, uh, scissors. And then down here, I have some uh, ornaments that I made out of yarn just for the boho effect. Our little presents where all the advent gifts are gonna go are uh, ornaments here, some other ornaments. We're gonna add some greens, some faux greens, some real greens. It's just like a Christmas salad, all right? 
<laughs> so, and we have some decorative lights too, just to give it a little bit of that warmth and ambiance that everyone wants during the holidays. Oh my God, I love it already. Yeah, so let's get started. So do you want to do it or should I, let me show you how to do the glue first. Yeah, I, cause I don't want to mess it up. Yeah, so I cut the, the dowels already. I didn't cut any fingers off yet, so we're good to go for the holidays. No rush emergency trips to the hospital. Um, so I started up here. So I started with a small and I went, um, I tapered it down. So we're going, uh, this one I believe is six, 10, 14, 18, and 22. I'm Pennsylvania math here. Sorry guys. So we tapered it down and um, we start with the top. So I added this little piece first, just so we had the place to hang it. And all I do is make a simple knot. So it's just knotted around here on either side. And which is great because, you know, it'll just balance out the evenness. And then I took the two strings, made them the same length, um, about four feet long, and I tied them to either side of here. So I started with just a simple tie and I began looping them around here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So what you have on either side is like, you, it can be a little wonky. I just eyeballed it. So, you know, you just kind of stretch it out. You make sure either side of it is about the same. And since these are already done, I already pre-did these. What I did with this one is, all I did was I wrapped it around once, like this, and I just did a little glue. A little dot of glue. And that's all it is. A little dot of glue. Right, let me see. Let's see if you can do so it. So I want to do it kind of even. If this yep. were me, I'd be using a ruler only because <laughs> I'm a little OCD. And I'm the opposite. So I'm, I'm going yep. to just, so just wrap it. Wrap it around. Right around. Yep. And a little baby dot of glue. A little baby dot of glue. Dot of glue. And then just kind of yep, push just it in. Push it in. Mushing. And then what I like to do also is now that this one's here, let it dry a little bit, but I'll also go under here. Otherwise, you're gonna get like a little ladder effect and it's just gonna roll down. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So right there. And it's just a little bit like so. I mean, other things you can do is if you're really crafty or um you really want to get deep and serious into this, you can actually drill little holes into the side of the dowels and you can make little knots and make it a real intense project. But for me, it's just, you know, a little bit of glue goes a long way. So we have this one done. We're just going to move right on down and then we have the bottom one. And the bottom one's really easy because all you have to do is tie it. Oh. Yeah. So once it's just a simple double knot and you'll be good to go. I'm gonna wait so it's even. <laughs> even. I'm the opposite of even. I'm just like, <laughs> whatever, it looks great. It looks great. It's playful. Everyone's like, hmm, why you can does eye it? it, yeah. Just eye it. So, yeah. Maybe. And then I just make a little knot here. Yep. Yeah. And the nice thing is, once it's on your wall, you can actually take it and, like, since it's not glued down here, you can actually move it around a little just, bit too. Yeah. And if it's really off, it's just glue and it can come off pretty easily. So you don't have to worry about it too much. So, okay, so this is done. We have our tree. Love it. Woo! So that's it's so cute already. One. I know, right? It's so you can already see it, it's like becoming a, a wall hanging. So what we're doing is we made these little pom-poms. I made these. Aren't they so cute? I love them. You can make them for, I like do them for a lot of things. You can I add them to them. pillows. You can add them to like a chandelier. But for this project, all we're doing is adding them onto the Christmas tree. So all you do is just wrap them around a couple of times and tie it. And super simple, super easy. If you want to start adding them, go for it. Do um, you want me to do it on the same one or it doesn't matter? You can go all over, Hot wherever wild. you want. So. You know, you just kind of want to make it look, um, I'm all about asymmetry and not symmetry. So I kind of just like make things a little deviated and a little, little fun for your eyes. And then what we also have is, so what I really wanted to do was make this an advent calendar. So my family is really big on our advent calendars at home. Like we had this one when I was little, so it was like a little teddy bear and it was like, was looking for Christmas. So this teddy bear would move it every day and it would like go into the like front porch and it couldn't find Christmas and it was like on a skating <laughs> pond outside and it was like, you know, going all around this house. And I remember being like little yeah. and I'm like, just go in the living room. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there. But it was cute. It was always that my brother and I would fight over like 
So advent calendars is like a big thing in my family. Did you get little treats inside? We didn't get treats oh. because we had other, my mom had other ideas for like presents. Got it. Because I, I would have been that kid who would have eaten all the treats. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, I don't yeah. know what happened yeah. to those. I, oh, I guess you're not getting any. It's the elf on the shelf. So I thought for this, you can do 25 presents um, in these little advent calendars. And then, you know, you can just make them decor also I love that. right so it's just it like a little like it's so pretty yeah so you can put them anywhere and and then once you have them up you can write the numbers on them at the end so i just made these little circles and i use a little circle cutting tool um so you get the perfect circle every time which is amazing because i cannot cut a perfect circle i don't know anyone who can so yeah let's put this on is there a big fat diamond in there? What's in here? Oh, I only use um, 24 karat gold presents. So Perfect. yeah, and it's like a lot of diamonds and I really like, you know, <laughs> I usually spend at least $10,000 on per the presents for advent <laughs> calendar. So I just, you know, when, if you're not gonna spend money now, when are you gonna spend it? I don't so. know. I don't know. <laughs> All right. This one's mine. But let's get back to real life. Um, all right, so then you can add your little fairy lights. And these, you can just kind of like go around wherever you want. So you can start from the just bottom, kind of weave, it in, weave it in and out. I feel yeah. like these really add just a little bit of like magic sparkle to pretty much any project. So it could be like, you know, a little corner in your room and you're like, I don't know, there's nothing going on. You throw these in there, it's like, oh. Yeah, it wow. just gives it that pop. And one of the other things that's great about this project is that you can take one of these, um, the present holders, and hide the battery pack inside the present so it You're looks smart. like it's part of it. Yeah, right? So, that is so clever. Yeah, just pop it in and it's making a liar out of me. <laughs> but go. you'll get the point. So it goes in. At some point. It goes in. <laughs> uh, this is like my first date. <laughs> all right, well, all right. Hold, please. All right, there we go. It's in. Uh, all right. So it's one of those things, you'll just wrap it with cord mm -hmm. and you can just hang just down to the bottom of it. There. And That's you just pretend cute. it's one of the presents. I like that. Got me flustered like a turkey at Thanksgiving. All right. So you have your presents, you have your cords, um, and anything for the presents, you can really do like these little gift bags are perfect for gift cards, for, like jewelry. Oh, that's a little, little that's so cute. Right? And then you can just decorate them also and you just make little loops and you know things for um, just pop it on. Yeah, just pop it on. So and then what I like to use for that is you can use the macrame cords, you can use a yarn, you can use, you know. Just like some hemp. Yeah. So anything. And then what I like to do, I go really neutral. So I'm trying to keep it like whites, ivories, dark green, light green. Um, and then kind of keep it like more boho neutral for the holidays. Um, I don't want to do like super traditional like reds and bright greens and colorful. This is more like a nice like subtle touch on your wall, mm -hmm. which I love. So it matches my apartment. So we have all these pieces and then we can add, you know, some fake greenery in here, which I love. I think eucalyptus and fake greenery nowadays are so good to use. They look real. Um, and I'm you're, surprised that's real. Yeah, like the I mean, that's just, fake, it looks so real. <laughs> yeah, right? Freudian slip. So it looks real, the leaves actually feel real. I got it and I was like, I didn't realize I ordered real eucalyptus and I was like, oh wait, no, it's not. So, and this is the type of thing you just glue it behind here. You can bend it however you want and you can just have it like kind of hanging down. So you just glue this to the back and then you know what you do, what I like to do, I think I've said this before in one of my last tutorials, is I like to just break up some greens and add them into here so that it looks real. So you just glue it kind of in also and kind of have it mixed in there. So doing like a layering effect. Exactly. So, you know, people yeah. can't really tell. It kind of hides the plastic of the, the fake greenery. And people are like, oh, okay. that's not real. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, I think we're pretty good. And I want to, um, once I'll get this all wrapped up and I want to show you the finished result. 
Yeah, definitely. Well, I can't wait to see, and uh, let's go check it out. So this is a so pretty, right? You know, so I'm just gonna like level it out and like you know give it some zhuzh and some make it look pretty. See if it's straight. I also oh like don't really care too much if it's totally straight. You can't really tell. We don't like a camera on it. Look at the little girl. So I found him a little gift shop, and I was like, okay, I gotta add on it somehow. Um, but yeah, so it's just like you can see. I added the greens. I added some of the, like the real estate. Um, the presents are here, and you know a little ornament. And you know, you just want to go in and judge it and make it look pretty. Um, and now that everything's up, I think I'm gonna go in and start numbering everything. Oh, yeah. So you can just be like, oh, here you go. This is three. This is two. And one of the nice things about this also is that I love is that. It's as a calendar for like, you know, counting down the days of Christmas. Mm -hmm. But one of the other things that I like to do for these is kind of like a party favorite party game thing. So what oh you can God, do I is, right? Idea. So you can just like, um, with your friends, your family, when you're having dinner or like having guests over for a party, mm -hmm. you can just put some numbers in a bowl and everyone like takes the bowl and passes it around. Everyone grabs out a number. So everyone can just like grab a present off the tree and just a surprise that no That's one knows what they're like... getting. Such a great way, like you could even do this in a twist, to, like everyone brings something small and like yeah. almost like a secret oh, Santa thing. That is a good idea. I love it. And I have to buy less presents. It's so versatile. It's fine, right? <laughs> yeah. You're giving it to me, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I think it's great. It's, it's a so great pretty. way to just, you know, you know, also like a this talking point for everyone. It's like exciting to like everyone gather around. We're gonna do this now. So and also, you know what? Even if you don't want to do the presents and you don't want to do the advent calendar, you're like, hey, it is December 21st. Like, I have a couple of days. People are coming over tomorrow. I'm not going to do the presents. Just add a couple of decorations and decor and just make, like, a little faux hanging Christmas tree. That's it's great. great for small spaces, like apartments. Like, I live in New York City, and I can't get a real tree. Just put it on your wall and have your Christmas tree for the holidays. I just love it. And storage is easy. It's so pretty. It's like a timeless piece. Um, I knew you would knock it out of the park. That's why we are here. Hey, thank so you. you did it again. Yes, thank you so much. And in true lamp smudge style, we're going to photograph it. So stay tuned for that. So now to the technical. Here we are on set with Tommy's beautiful advent calendar. Not only is this just a stunning piece up close and personal, but we wanted to capture that in a photograph. Um, so first of all, we are using the B10 today. So I'm using one light with a parabolic umbrella that has a white interior and a diffusion panel. And as you can see, it's not turned toward the sun. For this instance, I have the luxury of two white walls, so a corner wall. So I'm using all of that beautiful white wall to kick back all the light from the modifier into the scene. So when I first set it up, I had like a big wash of light here and it looked awesome, but it looked like I had floor to ceiling windows over here. Typically in a home, that's not your usual architectural element. In some houses, yes, but I wanted it to be more approachable. So in order to do that, I had to frame in a little bit of a shadow here and up here. In order to do that, I used this, it is a cutter. It also has an extension panel on it that peels off, which is really nice. So you can double it in size. And it's pretty close to the subject, but you'll see in the final image that there's just this really soft kind of vignette right here happening. So in real life, in a home, you would have a window here and it would have a window casing an actual wall here. So you wouldn't have light coming from the floor to the ceiling. There would be a stop right there. But we didn't want a hard stop. We wanted it really soft, just as a suggestion. Um, the other piece of this is one of Missy and our favorite. This is a V-flat from V-flat World. This is a super versatile piece. You've got white on one side, black on the other. And we use V flats for all kinds of things, but in this case, we're using it to fill in a little bit of this side of the, um, the image. 
Not only is this great on set, but it travels really, really well. So watch this. It just unclips, folds down, and comes together, and voila. Whereas if you were trying to fit a full-size V-flat in a vehicle, good luck. It's really difficult. My only one suggestion would be to take some gaff tape and just reinforce the edges. So make sure you're matching the gaff tape with the color of the size. It just helps to preserve the foam that much more. Coming up next is Asha Holmes, stylist from episode three when we were at Sail to Trail. Asha's a fashion and prop stylist, and stay tuned because we're taking this show on the road. Asha, this looks so incredible and festive. I love it. Thank you. So we're on location with Asha today, and she has put together this gorgeous mantle ensemble with glitz and glamour, and I love it. And I just want you to tell everybody a little bit about it because I know for myself, I'm used to the super traditional red and green holiday until a couple years ago when I got exposed to different styles. So fill everybody in. Yes, so since I was little, me and my mother would always come up with a theme for our holiday decorations. It was mm -hmm. either like we're gonna do all one color with like a few accent colors like gold and silver, or we we're going to do like a TV show that we really like, find ornaments for that. I was not into like the reds and greens and the purples and blues and Excuse all that me? rainbow. What? Sorry, and Skittles I'll... throwing up? And no tinsel. <laughs> so We love the tinsel. We actually had the box tinsel, sorry. And we would throw it on the tree. That was my childhood. I mean, if you want to, make sure it's just with the theme. So I came up with a nice color scheme. You know I had to feature the Amy Rose gold. <laughs> and I kind of built off of that gold golds with everything, gold and silver and whites. And then obviously I had to do some like really nice forest green because I came up with this like little town for the mantle. That was kind of my theme to think of the little birdies, the gnomes, and also the wood trees, which I feel like give like a really nice warm tone to it. Makes it mm -hmm. feel like more modern and not just your quintessential glam look. And I also added like our little stocking holders that have more of the gold, like a little rusty kind of gold. Yes. And I feel like that kind of ties it all together. I love the little white bottle brush trees or the green ones with the little tips of white. So they everything kind of ties all together. So you have a little glam, a little modern, and then the little birdies will do and gnomes, kids will love. So it kind of- Of course. Who doesn't love gnomes? <laughs> it kind of gets everyone in the spirit. Like I know like kids probably see the birds and be like, yes, mom, let's have that on there. So mm -hmm. that's so, what it's going for. Let's also talk about the shells. Absolutely. So I grabbed some can some birch wrapped candles, which so are so cute. cool. Yeah. And then we have our like little elf. He's manning the shell, making sure everyone stays in line. Lodging and chat. <laughs> and also another little gnome and then more candles. Also have some trees and like a little decor around the candle, which is really cool and mm -hmm. adds a little extra something, something. So I gotta know, so did this break the bank or was this on a budget? This was definitely on a budget because okay. if you look at these trees, there, nothing was over $10. Oh. And the um, houses came in like a pack and then the little mm -hmm. bottle brush trees came in a pack. The little birdies came in a pack. Oh, so cool. every, nothing was like over $10. Maybe the stockings pushed it just a little bit, but they were toys. But you can't, <laughs> but that's worth it. You have to splurge. Yes. And they have to go with the theme. Everything has to be connected. I agree. <laughs> so guys, we couldn't help but resist to do a photo shoot because this looks absolutely stunning. And normally we bring you behind the scenes to give you an inside look on how the lighting was done. But we're actually going to save that for an extra special episode when we go on location again and just really focus on on location lighting. So you'll get an intimate look into what goes into that. So we hope that you stay tuned. A big thank you to all of our guests for coming on the show and sharing their expertise as well as their holiday cheer. We want to also give an extra special thanks to our sponsors, Barrington Books and Homestyle. Both companies are based out of Rhode Island with retail stores and online shopping. They provided the show with a stunning and diverse collection of merchandise we use throughout the shoots. 
We absolutely love the curated collections and don't be surprised if you find us shopping in the retail stores. To find out more about our creatives and our sponsors, check out the links below. Check out the links below. Check out the links below. Don't forget to follow us, leave a comment, and share. Tune in next month for a brand new episode. Bye.